Kuprima Media's Polity from Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Sutner, here to discuss his latest column titled Democracy Takes a Heat Ways of Recovering Our Political Power. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you very much. A lot of people may agree with the suggestion that democracy has suffered a setback, but they would probably point to the low voter turnout. So do you not see this as the setback to democracy? Well, uh, there is a low voter turnout, but when you consider the reasons why there's a low voter turnout, it's not just laziness. Uh, the evidence seems to point to the fact that people did not believe the claims of the ANC in particular, that they were going to turn over a new leaf, that they were going to renew themselves, and they'll have to do better, and all of this sort of stuff. People, it just wasn't credible. So that the biggest organization in the country, the biggest political organization in the country, has lost credibility which was massive 27 years ago, 30 years ago. And that has evaporated. So that democracy in South Africa for the last 30 years has been identified with the ANC coming to power and the ANC being the leading force in South Africa, which had exemplary leaders at one stage. It's now become an organization which is identified in the eyes of many people as a criminal syndicate. I saw Marianne Tum writing, if the ANC hadn't become a criminal syndicate, it could have done such good things. Uh, you know, I understand that when a lot of people came back from prison or from exile, their families often thought, okay, now these people can help us, especially people who haven't been in prison, they've come back with money and all of this. Now they didn't have money. A lot of them had nothing. And consequently, they were vulnerable in the sense that, and I'm not saying only that, that those categories, although also people who've been inside the whole time were also very poor. But what I think has happened is that access to power has also meant access to wealth. Now, a lot of people only um, access that wealth if it is absolutely above board. If there's something crooked about it, they say, I'm not interested, don't even offer it to me. But you can understand there was a situation where people were in the category where they could get involved in scams because if it was a way of helping themselves and their families to survive, they were tempted. And I think that's also why you have all the assassinations in uh, KZN and other places, because even a low-level counsellor earns something more than the 350 rands grant. So we have a situation there where you have a low voter turnout but the question is why? Why did people who were so excited in 1994 when they went to vote were so excited now they, even if they did vote, a lot of them voted as a protest or as some signal to one or other party, but mainly the ANC, that they were not satisfied. And is it not alarmist to warn of the onset of right-wing populism or even fascism? Well, uh, the conditions under which right-wing populism has arisen and also fascism in the United States, in uh, Philippines, Hungary, uh, and Brazil are situations where there's disillusionment with existing political options. In the United States, people were very cynical about both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And they bought into uh, Trump's suggesting that he stood for the small person and he would uh, help them against the powers that were depriving them of their needs. 
In Brazil, you had had the Workers' Party of Lula, which had provided a lot of things to people, but they got into a situation where they lost a lot of their credibility um, after Lula's retirement. Lula was framed up on some corruption charge, but even without a frame up, the Workers' Party was not performing very well. Now, here comes this chap who is known by no one, Jair Bolsonaro, a fascist. And he makes the sounds which led even some people who had been in the Workers' Party to vote for him. And you now have a situation in Brazil where you've got, it's the second highest rate of COVID spread because he didn't, he said it's just like flu. Uh, and, but it's not just that. He was extremely right-wing. Brazil was under dictatorship about 20, 30 years ago. And his ideas resonated with those people. So we also have a situation where people are cynical about the political processes. And you already have populism in the EFF, but you also have some of the discourse of the ANC, of the radical economic transformation, so-called people, but also some of the xenophobic statements resonate with fascist ideas in Hitler's time, when there's a suggestion that disease is being spread by foreign Africans, Africans from other places. That's what Hitler said about the Jews. So we mustn't think that South Africa is immune to fascism. But at the very least, if the ANC and the EFF go into coalition in some of these municipalities, metros, it could have some right-wing populist implications while having the phrases of the left-wing actually performing right-wing activities. That's why I think it is realistic. It is a continual theme in your writings to point towards popular democracy. Is this realistic and is it also helpful? Well, I have experienced popular democracy in South Africa in the UDF period, but I do believe even if there hadn't been a UDF, that democracy should not leave people passive politically, except when they go and vote every five years. They should be involved in activities that affect their own lives. Now, what exactly, how exactly we implement that in the year 2021 is not easy to suggest. That is why I have uh, said, look at your locality. Where are you? What are the problems? Those problems that you face are faced by a number of other people at the same time. Can you not talk to them about doing things? For example, where I'm staying now, there's a potential of a big water crisis. We've already had lots of water outages in Johannesburg. Uh, can the people who live in the area pool their resources together to find a remedy uh, should water fail on a big scale. Now, that would be one example of a common problem where instead of saying we want service delivery, we actually say, what can we ourselves do to affect this matter? Sure, the, the water should actually be provided with our tax money, but we can cooperate on things like that where there's a lapse in governance. Is it not an exaggeration to say that the ANC feels no shame over conditions of the poor? Well, you have a situation in Guiani where millions were spent on a water project, nothing's been delivered. What have they said? You have situations in Soweto, which is probably much better than some of the rural areas. Uh, the president goes there, People complain about water in one small part of Soweto, and about electricity, one small part of Soweto, Nomzamo, he arranges that electricity gets fixed up. Now that's a stunt. That's not a serious engagement with the problems. My belief 
is that once the results are out, even the fake promises that they made are not going to be implemented because they have got used to getting away with not implementing. They've forgotten what it means to implement all the norms of a civil service uh, serving the people are observed in the breach in the main, although sections of the civil service like the treasury seem to function uh, quite well. But in the case of most of them, especially those concerned with welfare activities and health and so forth, there's been a lot of corruption and shamelessness that you can steal millions of things meant to protect nurses under COVID, to uh, provide for vaccinations and all of those things. It makes me feel that these people are indifferent to the poor, the poor from whom they actually come in most cases. They don't care about them anymore, given their actions. And lastly, how could you say with certainty that the ANC cannot return to being an organization that serves the people? Well, it's habits, you know, it's like if you become a drug addict, um, it's very hard to break the habit. Now, if you become a habitual denier of your duties to serve all the people of South Africa and you only serve yourself and your own needs through corruption, it's very hard to suddenly, they, they used to care, but somehow that connection between them and the people from whom most of them came has been broken. And to make that connection again, I think they've lost um, interest in doing that sort of thing. And uh, I just think it will need a new generation for that to be reestablished. Probably not within the ANC. Who knows? I, I'm not a fortune teller. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Crema Media's Polity about democracy takes a hit, ways of recovering our political power.